I believe you have met uh, Mr. Adam Bernstein on the bass guitar. I'm going to introduce to you the drummer, Mr. Ringo Starr, ladies and gentlemen. I'm kidding, it's not Ringo Starr. I couldn't get Ringo Starr. What? But I got the next best thing, it's Christian Kassan, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to invite our good friend uh, John Roderick back to the stage to try. Uh, that is if the sinister agents from the Hilton Hotel have not ah. murdered him. <laughs> I am full of dynamism. <laughs> <laughs> what is this abomination? <laughs> Monster. It sure is. <laughs> uh, technically, I don't know if it's half and half. I think half you, half you may have used too many monsters. Yeah. Yeah. This happens to be on every hilton in the bed when you go into the hotel. Any news from the hilton? The hilton has stopped responding. <laughs> Everyone here who has a Twitter account. First of all, I would encourage everyone here who doesn't have a Twitter account to join the media. And then join the rest of us in tweeting to at Hilton Hotel on Twitter that you would like them to give me a stuffed tauntaun for candy. <laughs> That would be enough, though. If you, if you got back and there was a stuffed tauntaun that had been hollowed out and filled with candy, you would call it off. You would say, "All is forgiven." You would say, "That is the kind of customer service that John Roderick, Roderick is accustomed to when he stays at a chain hotel like Hilton." Yes, exactly. I can show up to a hotel and my room may smell like an abattoir, <laughs> but if you apologize for a stuffed tauntaun full of candy, okay. <laughs> Some, some poor schlub of the middle manager at the Hilton is going to go home and take one of his child toys away. Like, oh, my daughter has a stuffed tauntaun. I'm going to go home. She's going to say, Daddy, not, not the team. Don't take the team. And he's going to take the tauntaun and he's going to say, I'm sorry, honey, but the chain hotel organization that I work for, customer service is very important to me. And there's a customer in trouble. And I need to cut your stuffed animal open and fill it with candy that you're not going to get any of. Instead, I'm going to give it to John Roderick. That's, that's what's going to happen. You know, this, this Nancy boy sympathy for the middleman is never going to get you a stuffed on top of candy. You're going to sit in your abattoir smelling hotel room making up stories about some poor schmuck while I luxuriate inside my life-size tauntaun full of candy. Now which life do you want to leave? You know what, I'm glad we're having this discussion on the stage. Are we? Because I think, it, I think it, uh, it points to a fundamental uh, distance between us, a distance of, of opinion, um, a and a gulf, a gulf, a gulf, but we are very good friends, but of course we are also uh, diametrically opposed on many issues, like uh, this stuff, Tauntaun. <laughs> and it's just one, this, this is just the tip of the, this is just the tip of the Tauntaun snout, as they say. <laughs> That's also what they say. But you know, uh, uh, we are good friends, but we are also in many ways mortal enemies. Which is why uh, when I uh, recorded the song Nemesis um, on my new album, uh, I asked John Roderick to, to sing it for me because we, of course, we hate each other. So it, seemed, it only seemed appropriate. What worse punishment could there be? Well, I can't think of one for sure. The Lord knows both of us have been punished. <laughs> many ways. Now we both had to work with John Glanberg. For instance, <laughs> I got a nightmare. Just kidding. He's 
wonderful. You're a wonderful human being. I love it. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. John. No.